Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Luckiest Peach Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel, the Lucky Peach. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, my girlfriend Michelle, maybe this is flipped if you're watching on Patreon at patreon.com slash Lucky Peach. Uh, she painted the uh, the logo for the podcast. It looks great. I love it. Um, anyways, we're back with another monthly review uh, where I review something that released the previous month. This is probably the most recent release that we're like close to like the recording date because it released at the very end of J- June uh, on on my birthday. So, yeah. Anyways, that. Um, I'm joined again by the awesome Raul. What's going on? What's going on? Y'all be jealous. I get to be here for free. I don't have to pay shit. <laughs> he said, Raul, your half awake review of Army of the Dead was so good. You want to come back to do Zola? And I said, okay, I've got time. Yeah, I don't. This, I, I don't know how I would do like or like one of these reviews on my own. I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't <clears throat> I don't do reviews on my own. <laughs> yeah, I'm still I'm still figuring out how to do the cult reviews on my own. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I had more time, I would join you for those. But like, yeah, you no, know, <laughs> I, 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 I had the chance to watch this. So that's why I'm here. That's also why you're the only one here, because I don't think anyone else in my pool of guest hosts has seen it yet. Yeah. Y'all go watch this fucking movie, please. Yeah, yeah. It's a really, really recent movie. I don't think it's on demand, so... Not that many people have seen it, but y'all should go watch it. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, um, so, yeah, as it's, it's very, very recent as i mentioned released on june 30th 2021 i did not see it the day of i could have i could have but i had a i had a long day on that day so i saw it like the next day or something i don't remember um yeah if you if you don't know if you weren't really on twitter uh like a decade ago uh, this film is uh, is based on um, a very very viral Twitter thread uh, that uh, Azia King uh, her her name like her her like nickname I guess is Zola Zola yeah stage name yeah. I guess yeah stage name yeah she tweeted um, how many tweets was it again. 148 tweet thread yeah uh about a trip she took to florida with a stripper uh, the story containing details of prostitution murder and an attempted suicide quickly went viral uh garnering the recognition of people such as missy elliott solange knowles and ava duvernay uh, about a month later rolling stones david kushner is he related to is he related to, to it's, he's not, he's not, he's not. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. <laughs> I had to find out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, he published an article interviewing people involved in this story. Uh, while the article noted several inconsisten- inconsistencies in the stories, and King has admitted to embellishing some of the more sensational details, most of the involved have admitted to the general gist of the story. So it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, it starts like, well, uh, um, okay. What are your thoughts before I tell the whole plot? On the film or the thread? Cause I, cause I, what's it called? I was on Twitter at the time. I just never saw this. Like I never read yeah. this thread. 
I actually read the thread for the first time after I finished the movie. I was like, oh, let me go read this thread. I was very surprised that they went they went ahead and uh, kept a lot of stuff out of the movie that was in the thread that would have garnered this film, at least the good old NC-17. So, uh, you yeah. know, yeah, I uh, <laughs> even though I would have loved to see some of that stuff on there, like, damn, they really said, yo, we got to make this watchable for people. Like, we can't just put them up. <laughs> But um, you want me to say my thoughts on the movie or on the yeah on the thread? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I was pleasantly surprised of how much I enjoyed Zola. Uh, I believe it is in my top ten of the year so far. Um, I really liked it. Um, I thought that it was expertly crafted and beautifully, beautifully shot. But not just you know technicality wise, it was well directed and well paced. I felt that the story kind of kept going and going and we were like always kind of moving at a good pace. Everything was going well with it. And I really, really, um, I really liked the stylism with it from, uh, from Janiksa Brown and, um, and her Brown Bravo and her uh, incredible direction. And I, I love the performances, but God damn, Coleman Domingo just steals it for me. Just what an incredible, incredible performance. And Coleman Domingo, he like he was able to switch like back and forth like that. Just like and he played that guy so well, just making him seem like the biggest asshole ever. And um, yeah, I um I really like Taylor Page as well. She was great. Um, a lot of what I read about like the like the behind the scenes stuff, like going into the movie, I like really, really respect uh Janiksa Brown and and uh Riley Keo and and Taylor Page for like all the work they kind of put into making sure that they were giving accurate portrayals. So um, I really liked the film. It was well, really well made. And it's one of my favorite of the year so far. So um, I have an update. This is actually, oh, okay. It's almost 10 years ago, <clears throat> sadly. Uh, and by sadly, I mean, just time passes really fast. It's from 2015. Um, Shit. And, uh, they they really did they really did the white girl a favor by casting Riley Q. Mm. <laughs> the real girl is not that attractive. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw the pictures. <laughs> I saw the pictures. I was like, oh y'all did her a favor. Like y'all did like, her a huge favor by casting yeah. Riley Q. Y'all made well look, first of all, Riley Q still looked like white trash. Like yeah. let's be real honest here. Like she looked I mean, like a, like a straight up smoke the rolls like that. She yeah. does a lot of roles like that. And also her bloodline. <laughs> yeah. But um, I saw the pictures of the, of the, of the original girl. I was like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. Y- y'all go ahead and keep that one. <laughs> um, not, yeah. You know, not to body shame or not to shame anybody. But like, yo, like, homegirl. I was with people that looked like that. Yeah. It's like... I can tell that she was from Florida. Let's just be real yeah. here. Yeah. Um, so I I enjoyed it a lot. Like I had I didn't read the thread when it first happened, but like I did read it like a couple years later, probably in like 2017-ish. And like so so there were moments where I was like, it's like when you read the book. And you go see the movie and you're like, are they going to do, are they going to do that? Are they going to do that? Yeah. Are they? And then they did it. And I was like, yes. Like, I was like pleasantly surprised at how much they actually stuck to the story. Like, none of it feels fabricated, really. Yeah. Um, Like, this, this, this probably goes in my top list of like uh, adapted films, like best adapted films. Uh. Yeah, one one thing to note is it was shot on 16 millimeter film. The second the movie started, I noticed that it was on film, and I texted Raul. I was like, "Dude, <laughs> they did this. They did it so good. It's so well paced, yeah. so well written. Oh, you could um, tell. You could tell. Like the minute, what's it called? Uh, you saw some of those greens and reds. I was like, "Yeah, you don't get that color on digital. Like that's that that's film, baby. That's film." Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I guess part of, part of the accuracy goes with like the fact that Zola herself was like had creative control over the movie. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. So yeah, in 2016, oh Jesus Christ, I didn't realize it went back that far. Yeah. They very quickly were like, we're gonna make a movie out of this. Um, yeah. So in 26 February 2016, it was announced James Franco would direct the film. Gross. Uh, from a screenplay by Andrew Neal and Mike Roberts, Franco, Vince, Jolivet, Christine Vachon, David Hinojosa, and Kara Baker would serve as producers on the film under the Rabbit Bandini Productions, Killer Films, and GG Films banners, respectively. In January 2018, it was announced the film was initially set to begin production in February 2018, but was shelved following sexual misconduct, the allegations against Franco. In June 2018, it was announced Janix Bravo would direct the film replacing Franco while A24 would distribute. Our favorite, our favorite, A24. Uh, yeah, and then October 2018, Taylor Page was cast in the film to play the lead role the same month. Riley Keough, Nicholas Braun, Coleman Domingo, and Jason Mitchell joined the cast. <laughs> God bless A24. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, I was reading that. What's it called? Well, well, what's it called? Franco was working on the project. She, he still had um, um, Zola like really working with there, but it was until like Bravo came onto the project and replaced him that Bravo worked really, really hard to get her the, the what's it called? The executive producer credit on the movie. Like she worked really hard for her to yeah. get her credit and um, she, she involved her way, way more in the movie yeah james franco seems like the kind of person to like i mean considering the, like how he treated tommy wiseau uh, oh yeah after disaster artist came out like treating it like it was his story and i'm like you just shoved the own the man out of the way that's his movie to be fair i do i do understand what's it called uh taking the mic away from him when he wanted to speak at the golden Globe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they that happen. Uh, well, now that we know that like the Golden Globes aren't gonna happen much, like they don't have a set date of when they're gonna happen again. Honestly, you might have just let Tommy speak, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So okay, upon second look, now that I've read all of that, uh, so Dave Franco is still involved. He produced it as well as some of the others. Oh, all of the others mentioned. Just I guess the only one not involved anymore is James Franco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, okay. Um, so I'm not going to read the whole thread because it's 142 tweets. You can look that up. Uh, part of the reason it's so long, though, is this is back when um, Twitter was limited to, uh, what was it, 48 characters? No, 120, I believe. Or 120? Yeah, 120. 120 characters. Yeah, the 120, 120. Yeah. Uh, so that's part of why it's so long, because they're very short tweets. Um, anyways, so <clears throat> the plot. Um, Azia Zola <clears throat> King, a self-assured waitress and part-time stripper in Detroit, meets Stephanie, an outgoing and crass fellow stripper, while serving her at work. Stephanie invites Zola to dance with her at a club that night, and the two form a quick friendship. Stephanie soon proposes that Zola join her on a road trip to Tampa, the location of a strip club where Stephanie claims the two can make significant money. Zola agrees and joins Stephanie, her mysterious roommate X, and Stephanie's sheepish boyfriend Derek on a road trip. Um, just to interject, I think Nicholas Braun is always perfect for those kinds of roles. <laughs> He is perfect for those, like, white man out of place roles. Um, bro, like, when I saw him, like, so the, minute I saw, the minute I saw him, I was like, are you? You know you, it's going to yeah. be good. I was like, bro, you, you, yeah, you look like white trash, bro. Like, you I look like him. it. That's why I love him. He's, like, the perfect actor for just, like, a weird dude. Dude, I was, I'm going to be real. Like, I was on edge the whole time with this character. I was like... I'm gonna hear it. I'm gonna hear him say the end. I thought I just was gonna know. hear it from, from yeah. Riley. Yeah, I was like, no, yeah, Riley and oh, him, man, both like, of them. I was like, oh man, I have a feeling that I'm about to hear these motherfuckers drop. I'm the sure. N-word. I'm sure. Um, IRL, they said it, but like, oh yeah, like the, the actual people, yeah. Obviously, like Zola and, and Janet, so we're not gonna allow that to happen. And yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't think Riley and, and Nicholas Brown are the 
kind of I think, people to say it anyways. I think that's a step like that, you know, you've already expressed, you've already like shown everything you need to show and you've expressed everything you need to express with like showing these characters and now the way that they act, like having them use that word would be an unnecessary, an un unnecessary mm -hmm. step. You know, the behavior, the, it, yeah. the behaviorism's already like showed it enough. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so upon arriving in Tampa, Stephanie Zola and X leave Derek at a CV motel while they visit the club where Stephanie claims her friends earned over five thousand dollars one in one night. The two perform at the club, but do not net nearly as much as Stephanie insisted they would. After X ushers the young woman out of the strip club and Zola learns that Stephanie and X have posted photos of her and Stephanie in a back page advertisement selling a night of sex with them. Zola attempts to leave but is threatened by X who reveals himself to be to in fact be Stephanie's pimp. X brings the woman the women to an upscale hotel where Stephanie proceeds to have sex with a male client. Zola, who does not wish to participate, is affronted when she learns that X is charging only $150 for each sexual encounter Stephanie has. Zola edits the price in the back page advertisement to help Stephanie earn more money, and by the end of the night, Stephanie has made over $8,000. Can we specifically talk it's about that woman. scene? Um, the, the one where, what's it called, where she's like, where she's going to get out of the car and she's like, what's it called? I'm done here. And like, you know, and he just like, what's it called? Get your, get your ass back in the car. You know, I'm like, I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd that accent come from, bro? I was like, yo. Get out of nowhere. And, and I love that, you know, she's like, motherfucker, where you from? She goes, motherfucker, where you from? I'm like, okay. I'm like, yo. I was like, it came out of literally nowhere. I was like, this whole time, like, all right, yeah, I'm like, this is like, you know, this is the this is the pimp. I, I knew it like right off the bat when I looked yeah. at him and I looked at her and I was like, yeah, no one just brings their roommate, like, this is her pimp. But then like he does that and I'm like, holy shit, what? <laughs> that's no roommate. I was like, that, that's no roommate, bro. That is no roommate. That's a fucking pimp. <laughs> Um, I saw it one time at a certain very large mall in the city that I live in. Um, <laughs> when I, I saw a pimp. Yeah. Like dead ass. Yeah. And I was like, okay, goodbye. Did, did, um, me. did our old professor ever give you the story about our, uh, about our, EF I think it was EFP. Yeah, it was EFP. Where we had to do that one assignment where we would do a um like a story on like uh, like on so like I think it was like one of those first assignments, like one of the students decided to do it on like prostitution, and the student almost almost was like close to getting in trouble with the pimp. Oh my god! Yeah, like in, ever since then, our professor was like, "Yeah, guys, uh, please keep yourself away from dangerous situations." Like I I I know you want to talk about these very serious topics, but. You know, please don't have your get yourself killed. <laughs> was the student white? I don't remember. I don't know. All I know is that he told us about like a ex student of his doing a story on that, and like, you know, he was talking to the girl, and what's it called? Had camera in her face, and apparently, like, the pimp saw and thought there was something else going on, and the oh, pimp almost, God. you know, got close to, you know. I'm taking care of business, and he was like, "No, no, uh, Anyways, <laughs> so uh, X initially insulted by Zola's intervention to his into his monetary affairs. Oh, X is initially. I was like, "What the fuck is this grammar?" Okay, uh, he grows impressed by the women's scheme when he realizes how much they've made. Meanwhile, Derek left to his own devices. The friends a man named Dion, whom he meets at a motel, or at the motel. When X, Stephanie, and Zola return to the motel, X is enraged to discover that Derek informed Dion about their reason for visiting Tampa. Worried that Dion and his friend will rob them, X forces the group to flee. Um, my friend Avery's middle name is Dion. Just. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you get. It's just raw, unfiltered. Uh, anyways, 
Yeah, that's my best friend's middle name. Uh, <laughs> after arriving at another hotel, X arranges for Stephanie to meet more clients or to see more clients at various locations, while a reluctant Zola stands by to ensure Stephanie's safety. When Derek realizes Stephanie is again engaging in prostitution, he begins to fight with her, revealing to Sola that Stephanie has manipulated other dancers into unwittingly participating in similar prostitution rackets. That's that's trafficking. Um, Zola is angered by this news and loses all trust in Stephanie. At the hotel, Derek and Stephanie's quarreling is interrupted when X bursts in with Baby, his lover, and Madam. Madam? What's... Oh, well, oh, female. Okay. Who is armed with the gun. After calming the situation, X gives Zola a gun for the women's protection, and Stephanie and Zola are sent on their way to so Stephanie can continue to meet with clients. After Stephanie engages in a gangbang with multiple men in a private re residence, the two women visit another hotel where a client has responded to their back page ad. When the two women arrive at the hotel room, Stephanie is assaulted by the male client upon opening the door and forced into the room. A terrified Zola flees to get help and calls X and Derek on her cell phone. The three return to the room and find the men inside are Dion and an accomplice armed with shotguns who have posed as clients in order to rob Stephanie of her earnings. Afraid they will be killed, X offers the men $50,000 along with possession of Zola if they let him and Derek leave with Stephanie, who has been beaten unconscious. As Zola is groped by Dion, X manages to draw the gun Zola has in her purse and shoots Dion in the throat. The group flee the hotel and dispose of Dion's guns by throwing them into the Tampa Bay. The group eventually arrive at a large, luxurious home. X shares with Baby. When X touts his possession of Stephanie, Derek threatens to commit suicide should Stephanie remain loyal to X. Derek ultimately, ultimately throws himself over a balcony, landing on concrete below and injuring his head. Zola, Stephanie, and X leave to take Derek to the hospital. In the car, Stephanie proclaims her love for Zola, but is met with cool disgust as an exhausted Zola ignores her. This, not to joke about attempted suicide, but that scene was low-key funny. Well, you know, you wasn't gonna act like I like that fall doesn't kill you. Like Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a, it's a bad injury, but like it doesn't <laughs> kill you. But like I love the lead up where she was like, on the Bible, this man's about to kill him. So and, and he goes and he does it. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. And then just you know, Coleman Domingo like motherfucker. Like, he, he's like, I swear to God, you know, I'm done with your ass and brings him in the car and he's like, You better not die out here. <laughs> That's what that's like why I love Nicholas Braun is like that's such a him thing to do. Like that's like that's such a him character. Yeah. Um like oh. he yeah, was has... annoying me though with his stupid videos though. <laughs> the vines. <laughs> I didn't even know what they were, but I was like, yo, it was Vine. Because that was when Vine was big. That was back when Vine was a thing. So, yeah, the second that he opened it, I was like, oh, no, they brought back Vine for the movie. Yeah, I was getting <laughs> like, so annoyed. And, like, the whole time, he's like, I'm, I, he's like, I bet you I can make money off, of, I can make movies like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and then just Zola's like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> they aren't movies either. It's a six-second video. Anyways, um, the okay, the budget was five million, and so far in the last, I guess, two weeks, it's made three point five. Which, for a small film releasing in oh. a pandemic, that's pretty damn good. And it's not even on demand yet, so you know. Yeah, it made five hundred and five thousand on its first day. And two eighty two thousand on the second day. God nice. damn. Yeah. So like it's doing pretty good. I don't know. Do you do you have anything else? Um, so like when I was reading up, I, I just I wanted to just first of all, uh, you know, just commend you know, the the very accurate portrayal. Not not even just accurate, but just the very genuine portrayal of sex work 
and uh, how Janiksa Brown just why do I keep wanting to say Brown? Bravo, Bravo. Janiksa Bravo. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm just absolutely dumb here. Uh, Janiksa Bravo and uh, her basically, you know, not just you know, as Zola as uh, Isaiah King Zola had said, like you know, not not even just the portrayal of sex work, but black women's experience of sex work. Like and how how like in how this film was like really accurate in portraying that and like how Zola made sure that like that Janixa uh, Bravo would would portray that and you know Taylor Page like literally worked at a strip club under like a fake name for like months on end you know to to what's it called to prepare for the role and like how what's it called Bravo just would talk to to what's it called Riley Keo and be like hey like you know like I get like shoot because. He always like, I really don't like doing this, like the way that I'm like, it's like, well, yeah, but you have to be culturally appropriative. Like you have to, like, this is like literally the character, how Bravo kind of like, you know, pretty much coached and helped uh, Kyo to like basically bring this character to life. And um, just, it just, it really goes to show like when you put in that like effort to really want to do the, the, what's it called? The background work and really bring that to the table. Like it really does improve your film a lot. Because like this was, I'm like, from hearing experiences of my of my friends, like, it's as accurate as it can get. Like this is really accurate, and um, I just I really, I really liked that. And you could tell that it was just like so patiently but really expertly crafted. They yeah they they put in a lot. I like that. We've we've talked in the past about Riley Keough, and we're like, I don't know about her. Are we are we looking out for her? Like, given who her bloodline is, yeah. uh, but no, like I I do have a lot of respect for her for like, yeah, was actually she, being normal. Like, was she the blonde girl in the Devil? The, the Devil. I'm sorry. Um, the House of Jack. The devil no, no, I'm she I'm thinking about. Boobs. Yeah, was the she boobs. was she the was she the blonde girl in in the House of Jack Bill? Yeah, the boobs. Oh, okay. Boobsy. Now I know who she is. Okay. Yeah, she's also in Logan Lucky. Yeah. Uh, the sister. And then uh, oh, she's one, in of the, under the one of the Silver murderers Lake. in the middle all the time. Yeah, and under the Silver Lake as well. Man, they make her go nude for a lot of these movies, huh? But this yeah, one, they didn't make her go nude. Okay yeah. Well, she, she said that this was the first movie that she didn't actually have to be nude for. Damn. Yeah, she says this is like the first movie I didn't actually have to take my clothes off. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay, yeah. She's in her first film was The Runaways. And yeah. then uh she's in Magic Mike, uh Mad Max Fury Road. She's one of the 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 wives. Mm -hmm. Um American Honey, Logan Lucky, right The House That Jack Built, Under the Silver Lake, uh Double it comes Time. At night. Yeah. Why isn't Zola on here? Uh, it's. I mean, what, are you looking on Wikipedia or? Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at Letterbox. Yeah. The people who update Wikipedia though are usually like. Pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite work of hers, TBH, is Logan Lucky. But like. Oh, I love that movie though. You already know <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> This also like goes to my like growing respect for A24 because like yeah the joke can be made about like low about like indie films and how like at this point A24 isn't entirely indie because of how mainstream it's become but like they are giving a lot of like more unknown directors yeah. and like writers and like just they're giving a lot of people opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't get from bigger corporations. Yeah, and it's still typically low budget filmmaking. So yeah. You no, know, it ain't yeah, no mid budget. Arguably, yeah, arguably it's like more mainstream, less indie yeah. because of how uh the notoriety that A twenty four has gotten yeah. recently. It's but I mean that's that's just that's more proof of how well they do. Like this is this is what happens when you actually give people a chance. Yeah, 
I mean, sadly, after the pandemic, we're really going to start blurring the lines between like independent and mainstream cinema because how many like actual art house theaters are going to be left? You know, how yeah. many like really independent theaters? So, you know, we've already closed one down. Yeah, in our I feel city. like Quentin Tarantino, please buy it. <laughs> yeah, I doubt Tarantino's listening to this, but uh, if you, you do, one, <laughs> yeah, I know. Please buy, please buy River Rose Theater. I know you got a lot of money to play with, bro. You better please buy, Ter buy Terrence, buy a River Oaks, please. Buy River Oaks Theater, please. I don't want it to be turned into another Trader Joe's. God, no, please. No. <laughs> there are two other theaters that close that are like former theaters in that area. One of them is an oyster restaurant, and the other is a Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? <laughs> I, I went down there, and when I saw Trader Joe's, I was like. Why does this feel like a theater? It was. But yeah, there's another one further down uh, that that uh, I guess shut down. I don't know if it was open before the pandemic or not, but uh, like in February or March, it opened and it's like an oyster bar. Damn, God. No. Yeah. Oh my God. Quit the Tarantino, please. <laughs> please, just please buy it, man. I'll show you my feet if you buy it. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. Yeah. Anyways, I ain't um, getting mine. <laughs> um, anyways, but speaking of A24, because it's just a small gripe that I have about their merch website. Uh, they released the the thread, the Zola thread in book form. Uh. And, like, I understand why it's expensive, but, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Their, their book printing is not good. Yeah, they gotta really step that up. Like, Everything they... else they do, yeah. merch-wise, is fantastic. But those damn books... Yeah, they really, like... Yeah... They just they just released the 20th century women's screenplay book actually. I really want those books like the, specifically for the screenplays but like the photos are just hey. absolutely, uh... Yeah, if I were to buy them I would get The Witch and Hereditary because you know. Yeah. But they're just like really badly printed. At least the photos like Jesus. They recently Christ. they recently came out with uh pet stuff though. Yeah. They have collars and leashes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an animal, but I kind of want to buy one. I'll buy one for Andre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. Andre, bro. He's going to have his A24. What's it called? Uh, Hell yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to take him with me when I go to the movies. Boy in the city. <laughs> in the city. He, he moves to the city and just yeah. becomes a hipster. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how hard it is to not want to buy these shirts, though? Because, like, honestly, these shirts are fucking badass. Like, they got some the good designs. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. their shop. I love like, their They shop. have great sh stuff, but, like, they're fucking expensive, bro. <laughs> like, it's because it's, it's, cause it's, uh, it's uh, sustainable. Yeah. Sustainably made. They have packing tape. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God I really buddy. wanted the St. Maud shirt, but uh, it sold out. That's my main gripe about their their website is like they don't take things off once it's sold out, even if it was limited edition. What is this like, fucking first the Saint, thing? The Saint Maud shirt is still there. Yeah. <sighs> the uh, what's the other one? What's the other one? The the fake Furby. Like a whole bunch of the the VHS for climax the. The May Queen logo T, like they're still on the website, but like they were limited edition, so why are they still there? Yeah, make it make sense. VHS for climax. I wish I would have bought. I go to bought that. Yeah. Oh, the first cow thing is a. Uh, I think it's an art print. It's an art print. Yeah. Which, look, man. You know, I know this is your podcast, right? But like, can somebody please, for the love of God, distribute Gaspar's movies in the U.S. physically? I want a damn physical copy of these movies. God Why would damn. you show me something if I can't have it? Yeah. I hate that I have to buy these movies on, what's it called, on, online or digital. Honestly, and, though, like, it's ass. Yeah. Come on, man. Just 
give me a goddamn physical copy of these movies. But um, yeah, like these like H twenty four does a great job with like having these like goodies and stuff. And you know, not a lot of companies really do this. You, know? you can get you can get uh love and irreversible and enter the void. And that's it. Love is region region exclusive. And they're all region blocked. Yeah. yeah. The only one that's not region blocked is Enter the Void. Enter the Void so, is literally his only physical release. Yeah. 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 And uh, region free Blu-ray players are expensive. Really expensive. Really expensive. And also just like, look, look, y- y'all, Europe, I have a lot of problems with y'all with Europeans, you know, about, you know, colonialism and stuff. But like, look, y'all, they've really screwed you over with your Blu-rays. Like, why do you gotta put a bucket like a whole ass label on the side? Like, wh- why? Why? You know, the age restrictions I get, but it's for the back. Don't put it in the front where the design is. Yeah. Like they really don't fuck you all over with that one, bro. They have uh the uh, also just just the concept of having things region blocked. Yeah. Yeah. It's the- so unnecessary. Why? Yeah. Why? It's like it's like American plugs versus European plugs. <laughs> Why don't <laughs> Why yeah. it all be the same? Yeah. Although the the electricity over there is a lot safer than it is over here because they can their their uh their outlets have switches on them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Switch off the outlet. Uh. Anyways, uh, what I was gonna say is uh, a twenty four has desk trays. Desk trays. I, you know, damn well what those are for. They look really cool, though. I kind of want one. Yeah. I don't. I don't partake, but I kind of want one. I mean, I use. I have a couple that I use for like my spells, and because you know the herbs get everywhere. Yeah. The desk trays. They're ex- they're also expensive though. Like the large one uh, has the aspect ratio on it. It's twenty eight dollars, and the smaller one has the logo on it. It's eighteen dollars, and then if you get a set of both of them, it's forty. Yeah, so it's expensive. Yeah. Man, uh, I really want these books, but damn, do they look bad? Another thing I do like about them is they let their like directors make little like zines. Yeah, for their movies, like they yeah. like, Janix of Bravo just released one. Um, it has interviews and stuff like that. Like, and they're pretty cheap. Yeah, and they do they do have free poster files, on their website as well. Nice. Like, if you wanted to like get the file and like have it printed out yourself. Yeah, you can do that. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This movie, the movie, is is very pretty. Yeah, I like it. I kind of want to watch it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna buy this shit when it comes out on Blu-ray because I, I really want to watch this again. Um, I want to watch it again, but I don't have movie theater moment. The uh, moment, moment, m- money <laughs> at the moment. I combine my sentence. I meant to yep. say I don't have movie theater money at the moment. Um, yeah, it's it's really not for no. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not on demand. Okay. Oh, I found an article. Hold on. Nicholas Braun says Zola is his most meaningful role after Succession. <laughs> uh, what's what did he say? Uh, though most people know the 33-year-old actor for playing quirky cousin Greg on Succession, his latest role is Derek, and the Twitter thread turn movie is a complete 180. Uh, no, no, where's the where's 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 the quotes from him? Yo, this same mod shirt is badass. Oh, he said, uh, I thought about times that I felt helpless in relationships where I just wanted it so bad and I wanted it to be more than than the other person. Even if I'm doing that for two weeks or a month, I'm like, this is all I think about all the time. I can't live like this. But if I didn't have my self-awareness, what would that be like? 
there's a lot of sadness to Derek and loneliness and he doesn't know how to make people love him. For me, it was just like, do I want to go towards that? With all the roles I do, I'm trying to check things out in myself, learn about something going on in, through the character. So I thought, all right, well, I'm going to learn some shit here. I respect that. I relate yeah. to it a little bit. A little bit. I relate to that. Not even gonna yeah. lie. I relate to that. I, I just, I, I think that they just, they brought so much, what's it called, uh, care and just a lot of attention to detail to the movie that I think was just well made. And I, and I really do, uh, what's it called, uh, respect a lot of the work that went into it. And I, um, it's actually, I checked uh, my letterbox list. It's actually number five. It's at the top five of the year so far. But then um, again, like, yeah. what did I give it on letterbox? I think four I gave it half. like four and a half. Yeah. Or five. Yeah. Give four and a half peaches out of five. <laughs> on the pizza yeah, meter they, they really they really went all in on this and i i love that like if i follow them on instagram a24 i mean and like in in the weeks leading up to the movie they were posting a lot about it like like obviously it doesn't have as much like marketing as you know bigger films but like a24 at least was like pushing it through their social media like they they did like q and a's with um Ezia king like they they did a whole bunch of shit yeah what do you think what do you think like independent spirit award season when it comes like what do you think you think that like anything from here is going to stand out to get i hope nominated? so i, I hope Janika so. brown gets nominated that, for best director the acting yeah. the right the writing specifically yeah um yeah okay zola said riley keogh's extreme black scent isn't exaggerated. That's how it really was. Oof. <laughs> I mean, you this girl, you can tell. No, yeah, come on, you can tell. Like, what's it going? You look at that that old that girl from the original thread. Homegirl's a snow bunny, right down to it. Like you can tell, and then you know damn well that she was appropriate for sure. Like really, she like, said it. Yeah, in moments in the movie, like I really read off of Taylor Page's face that she was like. I want to slap the fuck out this girl if she keeps talking like this. Yeah. Like, it was, it was... Yeah, I went to high school with people like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet... I bet you, yeah. Sadly, we didn't have that here. You know, we didn't have and that now, here. Uh, now, the one that comes to my mind the most is uh, one of those truck models. Yeah. Like, where they just wear a bikini and take a picture in front of, like, a huge lifted truck. She just reminded me of Wo Vicky. I'm so like Wo Vicky, bro. <laughs> Honestly, the whole time I was like, "This is a grown up Wo Vicky." Like, it's Wo Vicky. Oh, uh, or uh, what's her name? Danielle Brigoli. Yep. Yeah. Fucking Danielle Brigoli. Wo Vicky. Um, pretty much any other snow bunny. Yeah, Lil Tay. Lil Tay. Yeah. Even though wasn't Lil Tay being forced to act like that by her yeah. mom? Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, that's a yeah. child too. Like, yeah, I really want the same mod shirt, but it's, yeah, I wonder what the I, fuck is going on with little Tay these days. Hopefully, she's living a normal childhood. Oh fuck yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that same mod shirt looks badass. I I I would wear that. I'd wear. The How fuck many out pieces of that. are these puzzles? It's sold out. Fuck me, man. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was limit. Like, they make limited edition stuff. And they'd never take it off the website. Why? Just to remind us that we can't have it? I guess. They took they took uncut gems literally. I still think it's funny that they made a puzzle of uh of the head from hereditary. <laughs> Dude, family <laughs> hold on, look, look at this. The was it called me naughty family recipes book? What is I love it. I love it. I love it. It's all little like obscure things you wouldn't expect to be sold on like a movie yeah. production company's website. Yeah. Okay, so these the okay. The puzzle the, the Charlie's head puzzle is 135 pieces, but for $30. Yeah. Ladybird's yeah. cast, the opal, green knight. Oh my god. I love it. I still, I still need to order those sticker packs. I really want yeah. them, and I really want the gym. The shorts. lighthouse grooming set. 
for your beard, I'm guessing. <laughs> what is <laughs> yeah. this? It's beard oil and the little mermaid <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yo, restock on the pins, you though. Too, like, I want those you pins. Too can, you too can feel like a proper patent. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I, I hate those pins because a few years ago, like after Midsummer came out, I remember they were still in stock. And I didn't buy them. Yeah. And now they're out of stock. They really had a Furby here? Yeah, the fake Furby. But I mean, if you just go to eBay and get some gold paint, you can make one yourself like Tay did. Yeah. Dude, this is what this is wild, man. I'm telling you, y'all. I love it. I love their fucking merch website. They release dog collars and leashes. This 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 fucking company Candles. has so much time on their hair. You know. I love it. I love it. Greeting card postcards from Minari. Oh, they do have the free well, what's it called files. Yeah, they're they're like um. I think I think. Yeah, they just send you like a PDF, and you can print it off yourself. Damn! So I could literally just like print out a poster on my own. Yeah. Wow. I mean, printing out posters at FedEx is really cheap. I want this fucking, what's it called, uh, Good Time one, then. I have the, the LLC shirt, but it shrunk, so I don't really wear it that often. Shit, I'm getting all these. <laughs> he said, say less. Say less, man. <laughs> say um, less. Hopefully they release one for soul. I would get that. I want the book, but like I can't justify $28. Or festival decon coming soon. Yeah. No, yeah. Fuck fuck yeah, dude. Give me this shit. Yeah. I mean you give it to me for free. Hell yeah, I'm gonna want it. There's a Tony Colette zine that I want. It's only five dollars because I love Tony. Yeah. Lady Bird for president? Don't mind me. I'm taking this. Oh my god. Anyways, do you have any other thoughts? My uh, yeah, I just want it's wonderful, and I and I and I give it on the peacho meter four peaches out of five. Yeah. <laughs> now introducing the peacho meter, the peacho meter, the peach meter. <laughs> I'm stealing that. I'm keeping it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go ahead. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's a great. Like it's one of those things where like within the first five seconds, pretty much you know it's gonna be good, just yeah. because you can tell it's on film and like just the score like within the first minute like you just know it's gonna be good um yeah so for me i gave it four and a half peaches out of five nice um yeah i think i think are we good yeah i mean what's thoughts i just i, I think just go watch like, it i think the only like gripe i would have with it is that you know some sometimes i felt like we were moving a little bit too fast and i yeah. really wanted to like take some moments to really like what's it called uh, digest what was going on but we just had to move so fast but like I get it like the story itself is a very fast paced story and like we have to cover a lot of ground in this like three days that we're in Florida but like I, I think that it's just a really well made movie and I think that if people aren't watching it you gotta go watch it you know and of course I literally went into it just wanting to watch it because an Afro Latina made the film and I really wanted to support her and then I come out like wanting to read the thread and everything. And, you know, I, I really, you know, got an appreciation for not just uh, Bravo's work, but, you know, Zola herself. And, you know, hopefully she has a career in like writing and, and producing now because she obviously has an act for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought, but what he said. Because I completely lost my train of thought. Um, but anyways, thank you guys. Go watch this movie. Um, let's not go to Florida. Hell no. Hell I no. I have a mutual that lives there. And I'm like, one of these days, I might have to go there. But, like, yeah. I don't want to. Oh, no. Anyways, no. anyways, thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being here. Where's the fucking ball sack of the United States? <laughs> I mean, it's already going underwater. <laughs> Miami is already underwater. Anyways, uh, thank you, Raul. Where can they find you? 
Nerd Chicano on both Instagram and Twitter, twitch.tv slash Nerd Chicano. Before I leave film.com, before I leave film on Instagram, most important oh, one. Right. Yes. Yep. Most important one before I leave film. Please go and check that out. Um, you know, I got a bunch of stuff I'm doing on, on, ten, on what's it called. I think by the time this episode's out, the newest episode of the Cinema Condition is up. So go and listen to my conversation with Kelvin as we discuss uh, Bernardo Bertolucci's uh, Last Tango in Paris. So go and check that out and uh, show some love to the episode. So, um, yeah, just, I do a bunch of shit. I got too much to plug. It would take too much time. And you got to go. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here, bestie. Um, yeah, thank, thank you guys for listening. Thank you to my patrons for subscribing at patreon.com slash Lucky Peach. Um, you can find me everywhere at Lucky Peach, L-V-C-K-Y Peach. Um, you can also find a link tree, which has my Twitter, my Instagram, my letterbox, my TikTok, my Twitch, my YouTube, Discord, and of course the Patreon at patreon.com slash lucky peach. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts, any suggestions. Um, but always just thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, that's all. I will see you next week for our drunk commentary of Greener Grass. So I hope, hope you be there. So. Thank you. Uh, stay lucky. What the fuck? Stay peachy.